Alright, so tell us a little bit about your characters. So I play uh, Captain Boyeris <laughs> on the Night Flyers, on the Night Flyers ship, sorry. Um, Captain Roy Harris, he comes from, um, uh, his brand is Eris uh, and his mother used to basically build colonies and sell them. Not only was it profitable, but it's made them very, very famous around the world, because that's their thing, they monopolized building colonies. And now Roy Eris is given an invitation by Carl Brandon to do something special. And that's to depart from selling colonies and to reach out to the Vulcan. That's where this journey is. He's also a recluse. He keeps himself to himself because he doesn't interact with people at all. That's why he presents himself as a hologram. So that's the same as the book? Yeah. I'm, 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to sneak Apologies. in right through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take away if I say the wrong thing. I'm Dr. Agatha Matheson. I'm a psychiatrist. Um, I've been brought on board by Carl DeBrannon, who's kind of putting this uh, group of specialists together because on Earth, I, you know, we're 75 years in the future and there's L1 telepaths and they've been sort of um, kept away and uh, for study and they're kind of kept away from the, the rest of the civilization and so that's been my kind of job on earth or my passion really is to sort of take care of them, to understand them, to sort of in, try to integrate them into society in a, in a useful way and so when Carl asks me to bring um, sort of my number one skilled telepath on board because he thinks they might be able to communicate. The energy might be the same as this alien life that we're reaching out to. Um, I think I, I looked at it as an opportunity to give a voice to this sort of uh, group of, of people that have been essentially you know, cast aside and are outliers that I think have should be treated and have have a way to sort of integrate them into the world and say, you know, this is, this is who they are. They're not to be feared, you know, they're not to be repressed and suppressed. And so that's what draws me to the mission. What was it like to work on a spaceship? <laughs> um, it was, it was, we were in Ireland, we were in beautiful Ireland, and uh, we weren't really in beautiful Ireland, we were on a spaceship, <laughs> um, and so, no, it was nice, it was a beautiful uh, construction, it was, it was really stellar, I haven't done a lot of science fiction, I've been on a lot of many spaceships, but I thought the uh, artistry of it was pretty gorgeous, and, um, and humongous, and kind of this long, you know, football field of just intertwining tunnels and different worlds, and it was really, really quite a thing. That was impressive. Yeah. It is. It is. And it's the scale. Yeah. The scale and finding yourselves in different and, and your um, your digs were so different and unlike. Of what you would imagine the, the person who runs the spaceship would have. You know, it was like oh, very cool. Oh, you know, there was some really, really cool choices as far as that. So I think in, in terms of being in this world for the audience, it won't feel like you're stuck just in this like metal grid. Um, and yeah, I, but I felt working on it was, I, I mean, it was fun. It is, like, we're on a massive spaceship. Yeah. And, we, and we, we get to speak with space child and stuff, and, and you know, and, and amongst you know heavy dialogue and exposition, we have a, there are moments of levity, but ultimately it was fun. Like, and like, sorry, this is kind of being me, but being the captain of a ship and sitting down and looking really cool, and not to do much because everyone else does such a good job to elevate the status. So much fun. I just don't want to fuck it up. <laughs> I can tell you, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I needed to. I was waiting to do that. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any funny moments from uh, set? 
<laughs> Any prankers? <laughs> I have one. What? And it's, you know, it's, I should just talk about it because it's actually cathartic speaking about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> it humbles me. <laughs> oh, no, completely. So we, I was doing a scene with, um, with um, Jody, who plays Melanie. And it's a really intense emotional scene. And then there's some shouting that happens. And I remember, like, the director, David, this is the last one, one more take, just go for it, just let loose. I said, I'm ready. And I remember doing this scene, and I, this roar came out, and I farted. <laughs> I put everything into this roar. And the thing was, I could have kept quiet, and no one would have known I farted, because I shouted over it. And I forced to take it, I was like, fuck, I'm so sorry, I farted. And everyone was laughing, because I out for myself. Away that was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did literally give it your own. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was loud. Well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I kid you not, it was loud. I don't think I can talk that. <laughs> and if I could, I'm not going <laughs> <laughs> to.